I'm going to take you through our solar PV and Tesla Powerwall 2 performance and stats, as well as our electric car costs and usage for the month of May 2020. And it's been a bumper month, so stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, John here, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, then all the details of the system are down in the description below. So have a ganders down there if you need to know the details of our setup, our components and our configuration. In my April video, um, <laughs> I did predict that in my May update, i.e. this update, I would be saying May was our best month ever. I'm sure I'll be saying that in May. May was our best month ever. Let it be written and handed down through the generations. The prophecy has been fulfilled. May was our best month ever. <laughs> so let's drive into the detail. As ever, I've got my spreadsheet, which I'll bring up on screen. And there's a copy of that spreadsheet or a copy of a link to that spreadsheet down below in the description. So if you want to follow along at home, please do. Hey, what can I say? Overall, the month was wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. And there was actually just one day where we had mostly cloud cover, which reduced the solar production. Um, but we'll see that um, and how it manifests itself in the data when we look at the day-to-day -day, uh, figures a little bit later on. So our first chart to look at is our monthly solar PV generation. In May 2020, we pushed past the magic 1000 kilowatt hours. <laughs> In fact, we actually hit that on Saturday the 30th, which meant we had one day of generation to go uh, in the period. Uh, so what did we end up on? Well, we achieved a phenomenal 1,077 kilowatt hours. Our best month ever! <laughs> yes, so it's just putting that into perspective. It's like over one megawatt of our own power generated. One megawatt of solar. A capital M, if you like, rather than a lowercase k, as we've normally been doing. And it's incredible to think about. All that power harvested from the sun and used to power our home, charge our two cars, heat our hot water, run our glass kilns, and then feed back the surplus into the grid to power other homes. The so regular viewers will know we've had uh, 2.34 kilowatts of additional panels fitted in October 2019. And then before that, we had a four kilowatt array, which was installed back in September. 2011. And because we've got the two systems, I always split out the figures across those, as I know some of you like to compare our original 4 kilowatt system against your own 4 kilowatt array. So our original 4 kilowatt array produced 673 kilowatt hours. And as you'll see later, when we look at the month by month comparison over the past nine years, just how impressive that figure is on its own. So stay tuned for that cliffhanger. Our new 2.34 kilowatt array produced 404 kilowatts during the month of May. And we averaged a phenomenal 34.7 kilowatt hours on a daily average value over the course of the, the month, which sort of smashed the April average of 31.1. Okay, let's scroll down and have a look at our next chart. This is our self-power chart. So this is the percentage of contribution of the Tesla Powerwall and our solar to our overall self-power for the house. The Tesla Powerwall is now on self-power mode. And if you recall, I swapped it from cost-saving mode at the beginning of April to take advantage of the longer daylight hours and hopefully more sunshine. <laughs> well, that, was, that prayer was answered and, and then some. So for the month of May, we were 97% self-powered. That's up from April where we were 93% self-powered. And looking at the split across those figures, 
it was uh, the bulk of that was was supplied by the solar at 69 percent whilst 28 percent was provided by the tesla powerwall the odd three percent to take us up to the hundred percent 97 to 100 was from the grid so yeah again our best month ever since we've had the powerwall installed back in december 2018 if you look at the, the data as overall totals, we've actually generated more solar than the house has actually used. So we've generated 1,077 kilowatt hours, as you know, and the house used 888 kilowatt hours. Uh, so in effect, we have been self-powered for the month, if, if, if you're looking at pure totals. But the reality is that's not the most accurate way of doing it. If you start looking at the day by day and split it down, you'll notice that some days we actually had some grid draw, which then knocks our percentage figures down, hence 97% rather than 100%. And you'll see that later when we look at the, the data in a little bit more detail um, around the 10th and 11th of May. So let's have a look at the year on year. The mouse mat's moving, very high tech mouse mat. <laughs> so this chart tracks our solar production since day one, when we had the system installed. As you can see, we track back to 2012 for the month of May, and unsurprisingly, it's standing head and shoulders above all of the historic values for the month of May. But as you're probably well aware, I always say this, it's not really a like-for-like -like comparison at the moment because the systems were configured differently. Therefore, you know, it does throw off the comparison a little bit on the graph. So as I mentioned earlier, our original four kilowatt array produced 673 kilowatt hours in a month, which if you plot that onto that uh, May figure, it's still our best month ever, which perhaps I mentioned earlier. <laughs> <laughs> June had better get its skates on. I don't somehow think it's going to beat um, May, but you know, we'll wait and see. I know many, many farmers are currently wanting rain and doing rain dances to try and bring rain, so it's so badly needed. And as I was looking up some stats that Britain has actually experienced its sunniest spring since records began back in 1929, according to our Met Office. And the month of May has been the driest for 124 years in England, which is just you know, phenomenal when you think about it. So yeah, we badly need some rain. Anyway, let's move on. Let's have a look at the Powerwall in and out tab. The Powerwall had a round trip efficiency during the month of 84%. We put in 281 kilowatts and took out 236. And as with April, the Powerwall in and out figures are, I guess, slightly lower, certainly lower than they would be in the winter, mainly because of all the sunshine that we had. So solar accounted for 69% of our self power, which means the power wall was only really used once the sun had gone down at around sort of 8 p.m. at night in the evening to carry us through to 6 a.m. Carry us through probably um, to 6 a.m. the following morning, where when we would start the solar day again and still have about 80%. Um, state of charge in the battery and it's the Tesla Powerwall so 13 and a half kilowatts it holds when 100% charged. So yeah we didn't use that much electricity during the night um, to actually run the um, run the battery down. So yeah fairly straightforward not much more to say on that. So let's have a look at the day by day for the month. Good thing with this is that you can see the house usage and the trends in sort of a bit more granular detail than looking at the big total figures. As ever, I don't go into the day by day detail. If that's really of interest to you and you want to see that level of detail, then either pause the video and have a look or, or and or download the copy of the spreadsheet which I was referring to earlier. It's linked down below and it's sitting in my Dropbox. You're more than welcome to have a look at that. That has all the detail in it. 
The key for this particular chart we're looking at is blue represents our house usage, yellow is solar production, orange is what we sent to the grid, and red is what we pulled from the grid. And there's probably a couple of highlights that are worth talking about. There's certainly much yellow in evidence here, almost always outstripping what the house actually needed or used. And this is despite running the dishwasher, the washing machine, charging the cars, heating the hot water, and also running um, our glass kilns um, on most days, because we're doing a bit of a, a project at the moment. And in fact, there are just five days over the month where the house usage was more than what the solar provided. And the majority of that delta was picked up by the Tesla Powerwall, with the odd bit coming from the grid. But let's have a look at um, a couple of days in a little bit more detail. So that I mentioned earlier about the 10th and 11th of May. These were two days when we pulled from the grid due to poor solar production. And that poor solar production was on the 10th. If I bring up the Tesla Powerwall up and we can have a run through that. You can see here, on 10th of May, solar production was low at 8.3 kilowatt hours, according to the app. And the actual figure was 7.9 kilowatt hours, which was a reading I took from our generation meter for, the, for meters. However, on that day, the house usage outstripped the, the solar production. So the power was able to cover the difference until about 4 p.m. And by then it had run out of um, oomph, it was exhausted <laughs> in more ways than one. And then this resulted in this pulling from the grid, six kilowatts in, case, in this case, from, for the rest of the day, for the rest of the 10th. But obviously that also has a knock-on effect because if we then go and look at the 11th, we had a lack of um, any storage in the power wall, which meant we had to pull from the grid until the sun came up. So from midnight through to about six in the morning, um, we were pulling from the grid and we used 2.4 kilowatt hours. And then the solar kicks in around 6 a.m. as I said, and then it was fine. That charged the power wall back up and then ran the house the rest of the day and we were sorted. So thankfully it was just that one day, but it has an impact on that day and also the, the following day up until the sunrise. So yeah, there you go. Um, that gives you a little bit more detail on that. And incidentally, if you look at the 1st of May as well, that same scenario with a poor day the day before running into, in this case, the 1st of May happened again. So the 30th of April was a, four, a very poor solar day, which impacted us pulling from the grid on the 30th and then also uh, on, on the, um, the 1st as well. So I always find it's good to look at the patterns of usage that happen over a few days rather than just looking at one data point or a single day in isolation, which is actually very poignant uh, in current times, days in isolation. Okay, so that's your day by day. Let's move on and have a look at our average grid usage, daily average. Our daily average grid usage has really plummeted in May. And this graph looks at our average daily home usage and average daily pull from the grid over the course of the month. The red line is the grid pull and the blue is the house usage. And as you can see, house usage is up, but grid usage has taken a dive, a real dive, which is very pleasing to see. So a daily average from the grid of 0 0.7 kilowatt hours, so 700 watts, over the course of 31 days from the grid on average, and the daily average house usage of 28.6 over that 31 days. So yeah, very epic indeed in terms of grid pull. So let's look at those in totals and our next chart. What we sent to the grid was 232 kilowatt hours in May, which was slightly down on April. But remember the Eddy and the Zappy have been working 100% efficiently this month uh, for the first time really. Uh, so they've been able to utilize the excess solar. And you'll see that in a moment when we look at those figures for, for the Eddy um, and the Zappy. 
scrolling down to look at the pull from the grid for the month and it's just 20 kilowatts. Brilliant, really, really pleased with that. And, and most of that was down to those two days, the 10th and 11th of May and the 1st of May that we discussed earlier. Let's move on, talk about the Eddy. So the Eddy has been performing brilliantly all month and now the system is set up and correctly configured. And when I mean, when I mean performing brilliantly, it picks up on the surplus solar once the Tesla Powerwall has reached 100% charge. It, in May, the Eddy has diverted 70 kilowatt hours of solar energy to heat our hot water. We don't actually use any other heat source, it's purely the eddy to heat our hot water. And as you can see here, for the year, the eddy has diverted 163 kilowatt hours to heat our hot water, with a cumulative total since it was installed of 236 kilowatt hours. Because of the large amounts of solar activity, I decided to increase the temperature of our hot water immersion heater element. It was set at 60 degrees and I upped it to 65 degrees. So this made, uh, made that change about midway through the month. So obviously that's going to have an impact on using more electricity or more solar um, generation than it would have done if it was set at 60. So in terms of the savings, I've documented those on the spreadsheet there. If we use our sort of off-peak tariff of five pence per unit or five pence per kilowatt, the monthly savings were three pounds fifty. However, if we use our more expensive peak fourteen pence per kilowatt um, rate, the monthly savings would have been nine pounds eighty. Savings for the year are eight pounds fifteen at five pence rate or twenty two pound eighty two at the fourteen pence rate. So just to give you a flavour though between those two figures. So I'm very pleased with the eddy and how that's now performing. Now let's move on and talk about the, the zappy. Throughout May we were still in a lockdown and again that resulted in us leaving the house really for only essential journeys. Although we did do a few more miles than we did in April. So let's have a look at the Model 3. The Tesla Model 3 has covered 131 miles during the month of May, 18 more than in April, so not a massive amount more. And it now has a total mileage of 3,673 miles. We haven't done any public charging in either the Tesla or the Kona during May, which keeps it nice and simple. From the Kona's perspective, we've put a lot more miles on that compared to the Tesla and we've doubled the mileage compared to what we put in in April. So in April we did 38 miles, in May we've done 90 miles, which gives us a total mileage of 9,741 miles. And it's almost time for its first service actually, which is at either 10,000 miles or within the 12 months, whichever comes sooner. Uh, ours will be the 12 months, I suspect, which comes up on the 1st of July. So when I book that in, I'll make a video about that, what is it, what was included, what was covered, what it costs, all that sort of thing. Um, it has been a bit of a balancing act, keeping the car batteries topped up, because it's not good to have them at a full state of charge at 100% and just sitting there and not being used. So I've been charging the Kona up and I guess a benefit of the Kona is that it doesn't have any sort of phantom drain. So if you leave it on the drive, if it's 80% and you leave it, you go back to it three or four weeks later, it's still 80%. There is no phantom drain. So charge it and leave it. So ours is sitting at around 70, sometimes 80%. Um, and you know, it's, it stays there. And from time to time, it will trickle some power from the main battery pack to keep the uh, 12 volt battery in peak condition. But you know, it is negligible amount of uh, power that's actually um, used. The Tesla on the other hand is quite different. It does have fun phantom drain and um, probably more so in hot weather, in fact. And one of the main reasons for this is that I've set the prevent overheat 
option on, which is a, um, a menu option within the car, which it will keep the car's internal temperature below 40 degrees centigrade or 104 Fahrenheit. And what this means is the air conditioning will turn on automatically to maintain the internal temperature of the car so nothing gets damaged or overheated within the car. And it's quite surprising the difference. You go into the Tesla and it's quite cool by comparison. You go into the Kona, they sit side by side on the driveway and it is boiling. You can't get in and sit in the Kona straight away. You have to vent the doors and <laughs> some of the heat out. So I quite appreciate that the fact that the Tesla looks after itself and maintains its temperature. The downside of that is you get some phantom drain. So the car has lost 112 miles of range over the month of May through uh, fa phantom drain. It's equivalent to about uh, 3.6 miles lost per day uh, during the 31 days of May. Uh, what else has happened? Oh yeah, we've had a software update as well. That happened on the 27th of May. We went from 2020.12.11.1 to 2020.16.2.1 and I suspect that software update and the reboot of the car would have had pull on the power as well. So what did the Zappi do for us? Well the Zappi pushed 298 kilowatts into the vehicles and of that 298 kilowatt hours 99% of it was green and that all came from excess solar generation. There was 2.6 kilowatt hours of grid energy, which was pulled on the 1st of May. That found its way into the Kona. I'm not really sure how and the whys for that 2.6 kilowatts, but anyway, that's, that's where it went. So if you break those two down, 154 kilowatt hours went into the Tesla and 144 kilowatt hours went into the Kona. Because the charging wasn't 100% green, the 1% from the grid equated to 2.6 kilowatts and I'm not really sure when that was whether that was peak rate or off peak rate so let's assume it was 14 pence so 2.61 kilowatt hours times 14 pence is 37 pence <laughs> nothing and absolutely nothing which means that the 90 miles covered during the month would have cost us 0 0.004 pounds per mile uh, I have to, had to extend the decimal point to three places to be able to show that. So yeah, not exactly expensive motoring at all. I know there's been lots of chatter and buzz on Twitter for my friends and acquaintances who have had a bumper month like we have it in May. So I'd really like to hear what you've got on. You know, what do you have any perfect duck curves from those clear blue azure skies, what's your setup, what's your total figures, do tell me, drop them down in the comments below so we can share and, and people like to compare um, and see how other people are doing. So yeah, please, please do that. Um, that's about it really, we're, we're at the end. So I hope you've managed to smash your previous records and I will see you on the next one basically. So take care, stay safe and uh, chat to you soon. All right, take care, bye.